I'm here at, with Jack today in front of our shop. Uh, several years ago, Jack gave me several varieties of helianthus. You know, for a while I was confusing helianthus with wing stem. They're not the same plant. Are they in the same family? Same family. They're both in the sunflower family. Sunflower fa family. So we've got three varieties here, and I know one of them is endangered. Which one is it? It would be the world uh, sunflower. It would be this one. If you look here, you see four leaves that are whirled around the stem. Can you see that, Dave? So this is the world sunflower, native to some of the southern states, but quite uncommon. It grows rather tall, and uh, of course it has the you know the typical sunflower look to it. Uh, these helianthus will hybridize with each other, so these have been planted for several years, but this one has the characteristics of the true species. Another sunflower that we have is this sunflower. This is Maximilian's sunflower. And the leaves are not held flat on it. The ray flowers are longer. This is the sterile part of the flower. And the center, or the head of the flower, has multiple small flowers useful for honeybees as they gather pollen. There are bees on a lot of these flowers today. So the, there's probably more of Maximilian sunflower than any other sunflower type in this uh, collection. Uh, here is a, a plant that's different yet. The leaves are flat, and this is a form of swamp sunflower. Uh, a lot of our southern sw swamp sunflowers have narrow leaves, even narrower than this one. Some of the northern ones have broader leaves, but this is just one that I was growing and I decided to bring it out to put in Bob's collection. So this flower is finished. I'm sure it's well pollinated. Uh, other flowers are still going. So the bees can work these for actually a few weeks. It would not be, I, I know this has been flowering for at least two weeks and it'll probably flower for another week or so, maybe a month total. So those are the three species. The Maximilian sunflower that has the V-shape to the leaf. Then you have the whirled sunflower, which has the, the whirls, like this. And then um, it, this one that holds its leaves flat is a form of some swamp sunflower. Which one's the endangered species? The whirled one is whirled. the endangered one. Yeah. It grows rather tall. So um, altogether, it's a nice mix. I've noticed people stopping by to take photos yeah. of this. Yeah, it's great. an eye catcher for people driving down the road. Very lovely. Bob also grows uh, regular sunflowers, which are shorter. Uh, these would be the sunflowers of commerce. And uh, he's able to take go through several cycles of growing them. But these flower very late. You can't rush these. These native species flower uh, a few weeks before frost. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Well, these small sourwood trees on our bank are changing colors. They're getting red well ahead of anything else. That's kind of typical of these little trees on some poor soil. But even the ones in the woods, the bigger mature ones, are starting to turn red some. And it uh, won't be long before they're all completely red. 
It's a good time of year to figure out where the sourwood trees are because they're all turning red. And nothing else is turning at all. Also, an indication that falls right around the corner. This young tree has a lot of seed pods on it. It wasn't a great year for sourwood blooms in our neighborhood. Some years, even these smallest trees are just covered in blooms, and it was not one of those years. Usually when you see kind of a small bloom, it's an indication it's not going to be a very good year, and that was the case this year. Just that's the way the cookie crumbles when it comes to beekeeping. Some years you hit it, some years you don't. Anyway, eventually this bank is just going to be covered in nice sourwoods. We're going to prune back all the oaks and the pines and stuff and just encourage the sourwoods to grow.